I'm going to try to make some faux washi tape. And in the words of the great Bobcat Goldthwait, it's either going to be really cool or it's going to really suck. Hey, it's Care. Welcome to my take at the lake. I have donned my full length cosmetology cape, you know, so that I don't when you cut hair, it doesn't get in your clothes, and when you color hair, it doesn't get on your pants. I have donned my painting garb. I have rolled up my sleeves. I have some fun things out. I'm going to play with my $3 ceramic plate from Home Depot. It's going to serve as my palette and as a faux gel plate. So that's off to one side. I'm going to start with brayers because, because, because this ceramic plate makes such great prints, that when I'm done applying the paint to these, I'm going to pull some prints on index cards of various shapes, sizes, and conditions. I have a wet wipe at the ready. I have my new watercolors metallic watercolors ready. They're all wet and ready to spatter. The idea here is to get paint on them but not get them soaking wet because I want to move them and do some more and move them and do some more. So I don't want to watercolor these because I don't want them to get soaking wet. I want things to dry really quick. And typically speaking when you're scraping paint or using the brayer with acrylic paint or craft paint it dries pretty quickly. I am going to give that paint just a little bit of a squirt just because I want it to be, and maybe my brayer a little bit, just because I want it to move a lot. So we'll just see. I've never done this. I, I don't know. These are all off cuts from another project. I but what do you do with all these off cuts? Truth be told, most of the time I throw them out unless they have print on them you know if, if they're from my printer and when I cut something off it has some really cool design on it I'll keep that so as I'm doing this because it's kind of wet they're curling up on the brayer but that's okay I'm getting some color down getting it where I want to go now I like this bright teal and cobalt violet with the white I probably won't do much to these because I just really like the colors I just laid these down. I wasn't terribly careful with it. So I, there are some that are stacked on top of each other. That's all right. That's perfectly fine. Now you can take this as far or as little as you want these could be done these are pretty cool i love these colors even though you know there's not much on here it's pretty cool it would be a nice page edging just that but since we're doing it m my thinking is the silver or the white gold of this kit will be the probably the first to go <laughs> i prefer platinum and white gold and silver to gold any day but I think I would also like some black on here. Some black. Hmm. Maybe I'll do that in the form of a stamp. We'll use the archival. I went through and stamped every single one of my stamps a while back uh, last year and because I have a whole bunch of different blacks, some are blue black, some are gray black, and I have a whole bunch of ink pads, I didn't even know if they worked anymore, so I went through all of my ink pads, I stamped them to see what color they were and if they worked, and I dated it so that I have some idea. I'm using the archival for this because I might throw some more wet stuff at it. This is just an old number stamp that I got at a St. Vinny's haul. I'm going to get the stamp off because I don't want to get paint in it because then it might not stamp anymore. One of my favorites, it's a script stamp. It was square when I bought it, but I cut it so that it didn't have square edges all the time. And when I 
I don't put the whole thing in. I just put parts of it into the ink and then only press parts of it down. Because sometimes you just want a little bit of script. Most times you want just a little bit of script. This one, I one I think it was, I think it was in a, I want to say a thrift haul, but maybe, maybe I bought it somewhere. I don't even remember, but it sure is one of my favorites and I use it a lot. It's awfully pretty. It worked wonderfully in a in Halloween projects, in Victorian stuff, in botanical things. I haven't used it in a project where I didn't like it. Even if you just get pieces of it, it's pretty cool. There. That's all I'm going to do to this particular batch. A little bit of silver, a little bit of shiny. And that took, uh, uh, you saw, like, no time. I like this one that has barely any paint on it. Just the black and white is awesome. There's a tiny bit of purple right there. So what I'm going to do is just throw these off to the side and let them... Look, it, it's pretending it's washy already. It's stuck down. Now, this one didn't get very much ink at all. It just got paint. But I like it, so I'm going to leave it. I'm going to move on from this batch so this underneath that i'm playing on here is wallpaper uh, so i didn't really think this through when this gets wet it's got it's got glue on it so i'm gonna have to be careful look at that one with the silver shiny and this one got stuck to the plate i'm gonna throw we already we had a casualty oh dear oh dear Two casualties. Maybe I can save this one. I'll stick it over here. We'll see. We'll see if it lives to tell the tale. Add a little more color to the ones that didn't get much. So working on the wallpaper would be fine if I don't dilly-dally too long. If I don't let them lay here so that they adhere to each other, I'll be okay. Again, this one didn't get too much at all, but I sure like it. Especially when that light hits that silver. I just love it. So, alright. So I have quite a bit of paint left on this wall left over here. So I'm going to do just some painty papers. I have just some miscellaneous stuff that I've been collecting. Will this show up right here? I don't know. Not nearly as well as I'd hoped, but it will show up on this side, so. Here. One of my favorite things always is what happens on the palette. In this case, this handy dandy ceramic tile. And the water hits it. It starts to move and blend together. It's magical. I'm just going to pull a print, see what happens. I do this a lot with index cards. When I use this plate as a palette, I make a lot of my index cards this way. It's kind of pretty wet to be doing anything too cool. But I'm going to use my salt. My magic salt mix and see if that does anything. Not usually with acrylic, but one never knows. And while it's still kind of wet, I'm gonna just give it a few squirts with the water. Interrupt its drying time. 
and we'll come back to it. I can certainly pull another print or brayer some more colors over it or stamp it or spatter color on it. But for right now, I'm just going to leave it as it is. It's always so much fun in this little room to try to find places to dry things, <laughs> to lay things that are wet so that you don't ruin something else. Pretty. Some people like to throw gold on everything. I am all about spattering silver. Yes, indeed. Oh, I have this beautiful bit of black. This needs some silver spatter for sure. Just playing today. Just making a mess. Can we get one more thing out of here? Can we? Can we? Just taking some copy paper. Clean brayer. Of course I could use this brayer. I guess that's all clean too. It's all dried off. This counts as unwasted paint too. Again, $3 at Home Depot, ceramic tile, super fun to play with, hmm, not much on that side, that's okay, they can't all be winners, I'm just going to take a baby wipe and wipe this off, Let's start with a clean palette, let's see what colors are we going to use this time. We're going to go with neon colors this time. I love working in these. So much fun. I know, you're surprised because they're bright and I'm not. I, well, I'm very bright. I'm quite bright. I just prefer dark things, right? I like bright too. In fact, the project where all these offcuts are from, I think will surprise you as well, given how much I kvetch about things like that. But I, nonetheless, I've gone and done it. So those are my colors. I'm going to move this out of my way. And we're going to put a few more down here. And shout out to Leanne. I made good use. She found at a, at a secondhand shop, she found me a wonderful guillotine cutter. So I didn't have to hand trim or hand tear all of these. I was able to get out my big badass of a guillotine cutter and give her. It saved me so much time. So thank you, Leanne. Trying to get them all out better than I did the first time around. We'll see. <laughs> they move as you go anyway, but oh well. So again, I'm going to give the paints just a little tiny bit of water, just a tiny bit. I don't want it wet, but I want the paint to move. Oh, she rolls right up on there. Oh, so better to hold them while you're rolling. So they don't take off on you or get caught up in the roller. So I want the pink now, I'm going to play with the pink, I want the pink to overlap the blue just a little bit, but not a lot, so that maybe I get some purples in the mix, but then a whole lot of bright pinks. I want the pink to stand out on its own. So I'm just going to let it touch that blue a little bit to get some lavenders or some purples. Just to see if it's going to do anything differently, I'm going to use the little one for the yellow. Same thing, I want yellow 
in the white spots so that the yellow stands out on its own but I also want to mix it so I get a little bit of that peachy color and a little bit of hot not hot bright green lime green Okay, I'm going to put a little bit more paint on this palette. Same three colors, the, the three neon colors that I was using. I should put these on a subscription basis and just have somebody send them to me every month because I use them all the time. I know, I know. It's a thing. I don't show you all my stuff. Just my dark stuff. <laughs> okay, I need a water dish organizing all my watercolor stuff i bought another cart to put all my watercolor stuff out and i'm still doing that and that is out in the kitchen so i'm just gonna make do with a jar candle top because i just need my my brush wet i can clean it off really good on here and go into i'm gonna start backwards this time i'm gonna start with the yellow spatter the yellow First, get that yellow off of there. Find a clean puddle of water, fairly clean. This is craft paint. I don't care if I have dirty water. <laughs> oh, come on. Paint move. I need you to move. It's a delicate balance. I don't want it too wet because I don't want it to take too long to dry or adhere itself to my wallpaper <laughs> but i need it to move oh i'm getting my tv yeah i got spatter all over my tv and my i speak fluent sarcasm sign yep getting paint all over everything so when i teach class face-to-face -face classes my my brochure or my welcome letter said come on throw paint with me because I, I i do this a lot in watercolor we throw paint a lot just because i don't want them adhering too much to the i am going to move them a little bit if i was working on just the craft mat or something else i wouldn't do this i wouldn't take the time to do this but because i don't want it stuck to the work surface, I'm going to take the time to lift them up and put them down someplace different. So I can go in where there isn't much paint and give her some. Or when it's too pastel-y, when it looks less than hot pinkish, I can give it some give it a boost just here and there i'm just kind of rolling my brush over it because obviously i don't want anything sort of neat and painterly i just want it messy i just love this bubblegum pink i i don't know what my obsession is really with it but it's just so fun I did my whole journaling by fives in these colors, and I oh, it's one of my favorite projects that I've ever done, journaling by fives. I will link that in the description below. It is a, uh, it's a really cool way to ease into projects, to set a timer and say, okay, I'm just going to do backgrounds by fives, by five minute increments. So you set a timer for five minutes and you just give her for five minutes, just do a background or a few backgrounds and then the next time you set it for five minutes and you throw in mark making or stamping and i have to clean off just a little bit of paint on my brush i get out my notebook of unwasted paint i went through and i marked all the pages that need something and if i have a page that this color is going to coordinate with well then i can do that because it's almost full i can't wait i've been thinking of what I can do with this when it's done. I have a few ideas, but it's got to be 
full for me to do that. So I keep this out when I'm doing this kind of work. Work, you know what I mean. <laughs> Don't look like work to me. I'm going to let this dry and I'm just going to off camera on the side over here because I'm running out of room. I am going to do some index cards in what's left of this paint. I like this page. Had hardly anything, but now it has more. Go like this. You can see what I'm doing over there for a few minutes. I try to leave the lines plain so they can be used as journal cards and fancy up the back of them when I can remember. Sometimes I just get to play in and I totally don't give it any thought. You know, happens. Mm, what color do I want down there? I think these colors. And some hot pink up in that corner. Oh, that's kind of cool. I'm gonna just give it a little, a little bit of a spatter. Move it around a little bit. Really, I'm just stalling for time. Until these dry, the spatters are pretty thick, so they need some time to dry. So that's what I'm doing. Just a little bit so that those colors move a little bit more. Some of these cheap... Yeah, these index cards are so cheap, they got wet, and you can practically see through it. Yeah, it'll be very light. Pretty light, but I can do another coat another time. So I have another stamp that I quite like. Music. This seems like a good music. Summer fun. So I'm, I might just do that. The music one. I did leave square. But again, I don't usually get ink all over everything. Every time all the... You know, I don't do it all the same. So that... But music, you know, it is square. <laughs> music paper is square. So I don't... I didn't mind the square on this one. Fun in the summertime. I can hear that song. Some, some, summertime, 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 some, some, summertime. These colors are certainly summer colors. You knew it was coming, right? Because the Beastlies always help. It always takes me a little while to get the hang of this particular stamp for some reason. It's made for kids. I don't get it. <laughs> can someone please help me with this? Ooh, that one came out good. How about this one? There, that's fun. May as well do some silver spatter. Why not? It really show up too much unless the light hits it. And then it's just going to shine and sparkle. Even if you can't see it when it dries, it sure, sure shines. They're still wet and they may bleed onto each other a little bit but obviously we're we're doing messy here so if if that happens oh well this is looking fun these we're just going to play with the metallic Silver, I got a whole bunch of blue in it, so it has a bit of a blue cast, but that's all right. We'll clean it out here on these these strips.
I'm letting them overlap because they make they make cool little masks or I guess mask is the right word rather than stencil. Oh, I should save this one to spatter because that's oh she dark. Lots of gold going on in that one, so we'll save that one for the spatter part. You could very well, if you had the patience, and we all know I don't, but it would be really cool to sit down with these and paint little flowers or little stripes or something that you enjoy painting that's easy and quick and fast, you know, because you'd be doing a million of them. But there's no reason why you could doodle on these and make your own washi tape that way. There's so many different things you can do with these offcuts. I'm just going to put out some black. Jet black. got some of that acrylic paint in my stamp and I want to make sure to get that off otherwise it's going to dry in there and it'll be a sort of a dead spot on the stamp and who needs that I know I have a toothbrush here somewhere get in, that, in those tiny little grooves and get that out of there I do have a Stampin' Up stamp cleaner but I don't think that that soft felt would be good enough to get in there and get that paint out of those little tiny spots. Back to spattering. You could put marks on some of them. They almost look like feathers. And you'd have one in a million absolute unique to you and your color choices washi tape. They're drying back because there's so much water in it. They're drying back pretty gray and I'd, I'd rather have it black with those metallics. Throughout the book, I'm always trying to make different marks, different patterns, different brushes. I have made a righteous mess of this water, so I am gonna go clean that out. I'll grab one of my water jars so I don't have to keep cleaning it every five seconds. Oh, what am I doing? I got one more layer I wanted to do on these. Doofus. The super bright, holy wow, is it gonna stand out on that black. I'm trying to aim the spatters onto the black spots so that they'll pop a little. If one can aim spatter, I mean, for real, do you have to be such a control freak? Yes, I do. When there's quite a bit of paint like that left, I don't cram that into my unwasted paint book. I put it back in. Yes, my brush is dirty, but that black, there's so much black, it will overpower what tiny little bit of whatever color is in there, so I'm not going to worry about it. But that, I will clean my brush out over here on this palette. And that gold mica is now mixed with that black. It should do something fun on an index card. Some gold in it, it's pretty cool. really hate that big black dot on there. But I like all the other stuff that's happening. It's pretty cool. Alright, let's try another one. It's cool where the gold is. Or oh, that stupid black dot. I'm just going to see what the water spatters do to it. Be 
you spray it before it dries. And that's just craft paint, but it kind of works a little like watercolor if you time it right. All right, I'm gonna give this one one more try. Oh, I got, I got hot pink paint on the white walls behind me. Yes, indeed. Just a given her. Ugh, junk. Now they can't all be winners. One more batch. I was gonna do them all horizontal, just for something different, but I have a few, I, I wanna get them all done, so then I just staggered them just to see how this is gonna work too. All the other ones, I started with paint on the bottom, then stamped, and then spattered. So I think this time I'm going to start backwards and start with the stamping, just to see how that's going to work or not. Try and keep them in the same spot so they're not moving all over the place. I like the faded script. I think that's so pretty when it's just sort of in the background like that. I quite like that. I like it bright too. I like it good and, and clear as well. I have lots of other colors and I've been thinking of which color combo I wanted to do, but I think I want to do just black and white because you can use that in anything. You can throw coffee at it later and vintage it up if you want. You can later add an accent color if you're doing a purple and green book well I'll pull out some of your just black and white would go with that but if you wanted to add some purple later you could purple and green so that it combos with whatever you're doing I'm gonna use my favorite scrolly scroll I don't even know what to call it it's like a vine I did a video a long time ago how to jazz up scraps. I think it was a Louisa Heinzel video that I was following and it was super fun. And this feels very much the same. These are just huge, long, skinny scraps is essentially all they are. So I'm basically doing the same thing. I mean, there's nothing new here. Look at these ferns. I haven't used these before. I think I got these in a St. Vinny's Hall a while back. Shall we move them and get different, different looks? I don't know. I kind of don't want to do too many of one thing. Have them look like botanical garden gone awry. An overgrown English garden or something. I don't want to junk them up necessarily. I just don't want them to be plain either. Yes, that was me putting things away right away just because my desk here is full. If I don't put it away, I have to hold it. Break into my Bombay, P.H. Martin, Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay Black India ink. I have to be careful with this because holy smack, this is this will make a nice mess if I spatter it all over the walls. But it's nice black. Deep black. You could do this with tissue paper and make your own collage paper or decoupage paper. You could do this with any of your scraps, whether they're plain white paper or offcuts from colors or printouts. Even book pages. This would be great fun to do on book pages. I kind of feel like I should have stamped some numbers on here, so maybe maybe I'll do that. Just has a Tim Holtzy kind of feel, doesn't it? With the numbers. It gives it that industrial kind of effect and we love that don't we just love that look let me bring some of these hot neon color ones back out because i think the black the bright black from this ink would look good on here i'll 
so you gotta be careful on how you let them dry. They stick together. And then you have jacked up washi tape. Who needs that, really? Nothing like a good ink splotch. Okay, now that I've got India ink all over the room, I think my work here is complete. Holy smokes, did I make a mess. I'll take one of these that I don't really like and see if I can pick up this beautiful circle that I made a mess with over here. Not really, made it into a black moon. Oh well. That's not bad either with a little bit of gold at the bottom. <laughs> It'll turn into something. It might turn into kindling, bonfire starter, who knows. I'm going to let these dry. I'm going to clean up my mess and I'll come back and we'll see what we ended up with. So these turned out pretty cool. Too. I like that little bit of silver sparkle on them. I like the plain ones and I really like the ones with the, the black. I think the black just makes that those neon colors just sing. And when the light hits it right, you get this that fun play of the silver. Now, I can see going over these with Sharpie markers, make, maybe doodling or making some letters or turning them into words. You know, just a little word, write fun or summer words or taking, oh, I don't have any handy, but taking phrases like this and putting them on here there's all kinds of things you can do with it now that they're done use them as page edging in colored glue books if you have a neon section or a bright section all different kinds of things that you can do and let's not forget I cleaned off that the tile with just a plain piece of copy paper it's very subtle but it's still nice and bright so you could journal on it or doodle on it. This would make a fun journal page for sure. And then the two cards I think turned out really well. Again, putting black words on there and black doodling or black and white stickers. I think that would just sing. I, I really like that combination, those bright neons with black and white. And I have a few more pages done in my colors glue book, or unwasted paint glue book. It's not a glue book, stop saying that. Unwasted paint composition book. So let's see how they turned out now that they're dry. This one didn't get very much. I'm going to put it with the black and whites just because. Some got wetter than others, so I'm just kind of ironing them out with your fingers. That's all right. Of course, it's faux washi. You'll have to glue it down. Glue stick will work or tape runner or any kind of glue. These are nice and light. But you use them wherever you would use washi. I love these colors. These are some of my favorite colors put together. Something like that. It didn't get, it didn't get very much of anything, really. Uh, so I could stamp it. I could run the paw print over it. I could put words on here. I could leave it. Probably won't, but it could. And again, that s silver just s dresses it right up. I could add more of that. I have silver pens and silver markers. Very, very pretty. I love just the random stamps and partial stamps. Very grungy. And these took no time to make at all. I also got a beautiful journal card out of it. At that. Let's see if I can get this up close. I mean really close. Look at the play of paint there. I mean you can't duplicate that stuff sometimes. Here too. All the veining. Just so pretty. 
I think I did this one too when I was doing these. It's just, it's wallpaper that I have flat black acrylic paint, craft paint on, and then spattered with the white gold slash silver color. I'd make a fun miniature journal cover. If I'm doing a miniature journal, it'd be a great page. Certainly a cool pocket. All kinds of uses for it, I think. And I did pull one page from the ceramic tile. And again, very subtle, but pretty. Could do the back could do more, put some stamping and spattering and do all the things we did here on here if I wanted to. These, I think, I feel like I should have stamped on these too. Look how they're just all shiny. It's like a metallic tape now. This one even has a little bit of pink on it. I don't know how that happened. I don't know how pink got everywhere. So pretty. These I think I'll put in a book, let them uh, uncurl a little bit. I feel like I want to mark these up just a little bit. So I'm going to use my Artex. Oh, I don't have to drag them out because my black one's right here. Keep this one handy. These have a brush tip and a fine writing tip. It's not fine by any standard, but I'm going to use the brush tip and just... make some marks. These brushes always make me want to do Asian inspired mark making. You can do all kinds of things on there to jazz it up a little bit. I, I love these pens. Uh, it says acrylic marker set and it, I don't know. It's pretty watery acrylic paint. I, I, would, I would like it to be more opaque, like a Posca, and it's not. So I, I don't really use them much. They do write beautifully on magazine pages. I'm gonna put these unwieldy ones aside. I did these off camera because it's the same exact process. It was just different colors. Again, use that silver watercolor. Same stamps. Pink, gray, and silver acrylic craft paint. Just cheap stuff from Walmart. Same stamps. Pretty did one card and pulled one paper and then cleaned off my silver brush on it. So when you look right at it, you don't really see the silver until it hits the light. So we're making coordinating stuff here. So I have a journal card, journal page, matching washi tape. I could pull more pages to match. You know, Matchy matchy, because that's the way she likes it. Things have to coordinate and at least look like they go together. At least in my world, that's how my world operates. And here we have finally the plain Jane black and white ones. And these are just lovely. Look, this one's two-sided. This one's purple on the one side and black and white on the other. I'm not sure how I did that, but I did it. I think these turned out amazing. I love these. That India ink just stays so vibrant and black and deep and rich. I love that. And some of these had print on them. I didn't cut it properly, and so they have a little bit of printer ink on there, but that's all right. That works. I'll put it over here with the pink. Now it matches. 
here i'll put it, this one over there with the pink too and just so you can see it i did spray these with my coffee spray to vintage them up a little bit because i used the archival ink and the india ink nothing moved again i just gave it a spray with my coffee coffee spray just and I did leave some white sort of on purpose. Nothing here is directly on purpose. You know, you saw the process. It's not, it's not too, too uh, precise by any, by any stretch. But I think they're, I think they're great. I love this one with the fern. I, I wasn't sure I was going to like it. And I totally really like it now. And I think you could do that with anything. Like if I had, well, let's just try it, shall we? Because I have all these fun sprays here. I'm going to move these out of the way so I don't get them all that way. Fun spray them. And because we're using the blues, let's throw some salt in because salt does magical things to watercolor I'm gonna move these aside to dry do some index cards Nothing ever wasted. Yeah, our both sides are nice and painty to use in something along with my beautiful washi. I have more fun with this $3 tile, I'll tell you. So if you did all black and white ones, then you can go in with your fun sprays later and make them whatever color you want. Those turned out awesome, I think. I love them. Nice and close. You can see all the, the uh, different stuff at work. Well, now I want to do more like this. I should have did them all black and white, and then I could have fun sprayed them all. That's what I'll do next time I have off cuts. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got some inspiration. It's not rocket science. I'm certainly not the first or the last one to do this, but this is how I do it. My take on what to do with off cuts this time, because there's about a billion other things you could do with off cuts. That's a story for another day. Until then though, you have a lovely crafty day. Go love up your Beasleys. Cause you never know what tomorrow's gonna bring. I'll take out the lake. Out for now.